Another place where relative velocity tends to come up a lot is things like airplanes or flowing rivers or sailing on an ocean where you have something that is moving on top of a medium or background that is moving as well. In this case, we are talking about an airplane. Let's look at the bird's eye view. So there's the airplane. It has an airspeed of 260 meters per second in direction south of west. So that again means, let's say we have north that way and east that way. So there's west and we go five degrees south of that. So this actually, when we talk about airspeed, that's how, how fast a plane is moving with respect to the air because all the instruments on the airplane can only measure how it's moving relative to the air because it's not touching the ground. But then it's in a jet stream that's moving at a certain speed in a direction 15 degrees south of east. So let's say there's east, 15 degrees south of east. So basically the plane is actually moving against the background that's moving in that direction. And that's basically the air relative to the ground. So to someone who is, there's a ground, looking at with binoculars or something, what they see is a different speed, right? Because the plane is moving with a certain speed with the air, and then the air is moving with a certain speed with the ground. So together, the plane moves at a different speed being affected by the wind. Now to keep track of what goes where, I like to fall back on my notation because I can see that we have plane dash air. So V of plane dash air is equal to V of plane minus V of air. And on this side can be relative to any other reference frame. So I'll use the graph. So therefore to find what the plane is doing relative to the ground, well, I guess earth in this case, I have to add these two vectors, which sort of makes sense. And again, because these are vectors, I can't just add them up like numbers. I got to draw out all the arrows and do the decomposing and all that. So if you were to give me an answer of 260 plus 35, that would be completely wrong. So that's north, that's east. Let's name this positive y and name that positive x because we have to do some decomposition in a minute. Five degrees south of west, and then 15 degrees south of east. Simple vector addition question we have dealt with earlier on the chapter. We have V plane relative to the air, and this is VP air in the X, VP air in the Y. This is equal to 260 meters per second because this here is five, that's cosine because it's the adjacent, five degrees, 260 meters per second cosine, oops, sine, five degrees for the opposite, which is my y. But this is going south, so that's a negative for our definition. And this is going west, so that's our negative. Similarly, we have 15 degrees, clearly not drawn to scale. That looks more like a 45. So air with respect to ground, V air, ground, X and Y, ground. So V air with respect to the ground, and the X, V air with respect to the ground, to the Y. This time it's positive X and the specific speed is 35 meters per second. Again, cosine in this case, because we have this angle, so it's the adjacent we're dealing with. And the opposite is that. And again, we deal with the X and the Y separately. So that's your 260 cosine five degrees meters per second plus, oh, negative, plus 35, 
meters per second cosine 15 calculator negative 225.2 meters per second and again we do the y negative sine meters per second plus another negative because they both go in the south calculator degree mode so we can see that we have a negative VP G in the X and then we have a smaller VP G in the Y going south and so the overall plane's velocity according to the ground points somewhere in that way. Again, typically want us to put it back together in terms of magnitude and the direction. The magnitude we can get using Pythagoras again gives us 227 meters per second, keeping only the three sig figs because that's the final answer. Again, using the inverse tangent of VPG Y over VPG X, keeping only the distances, of course. And the meters per second cancels out. And we arrive at our answer that the velocity of the plane relative to the Earth. In this case, the angle start west and go south south of west. Again, your magnitude and direction separately to give us the final answer. For part B, they want you to kind of reason out whether or not that's expected in the sense that since one was going east and one was going west, when you add them, you expect the magnitude to decrease slightly and it did. It went from 260 to 227. And also, because they were both heading south, you expect that the angle gets a little bigger, so it went from 5 degrees to 8 degrees. Seems to make sense. Just a quick sanity check. The main thing of the problem, of course, is to learn to deal with relative velocity to know what's being subtracted away from what, and how do you go back by adding the correct vectors with each other.